Hi, my name is William Chen, and today I'll be presenting on the estimation of macroeconomic models. Before I begin, I would first like to read a disclaimer that the views expressed in this talk are my own and do not necessarily reflect those of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, nor the uh, Federal Reserve System. So macroeconomic models are derived from theoretical relationships seeking to capture the key components of an aggregate economy. The ultimate test of these models is to estimate them against macro data. However, these models are big and slow to estimate. There are several dozen and sometimes hundreds of parameters that need to be estimated. For the context of my talk, I will be specifically focusing on a popular paradigm for macroeconomic, macroeconomic modeling called dynamic stochastic general equilibrium, or DSGE. Because of these computational constraints, it is important to develop effective estimation strategies. DSG.JL is a package developed by the New York Fed to achieve this aim. This talk will present a new addition to the suite of estimation strategies in DSGE.JL, DSG vector autoregressions, or DSGE VARs. A vector autoregression is just a linear regression of time series data based on past observations. Formally, you can let yt be time series data, and then a pth order VAR is just a regression of today's observables on previous observations up to the data from p periods ago, or the pth lag. You can rewrite this definition in a more compact form where the phi term is just stacked into a matrix of, uh, as a matrix of the regression coefficients stacked, and the xt term is a vector stacking the intercept term and the lag data. Now that I covered what VARs are, I can now describe what DSGEs are. At a fairly non-technical level, a DSGE is a mathematical model that is micro-founded, meaning that you model how individual agents are going to make decisions based on economic conditions. Changes in these conditions will therefore induce changes in individual decisions. To obtain aggregate outcomes, either you aggregate all of these agents into a single representative agent so that the economy behaves as if there was just one agent, or you have heterogeneous agents so that you need to aggregate outcomes across these different groups. Typically, we linearize DSGEs to obtain a linear state space representation. The underlying states will follow a linear transition equation subject to shocks epsilon t, all of which depend on theta which are the parameters of the DSGE. The measurement equation then maps these states to observable time series like GDP, and this mapping may also depend on the DSGE's parameters. Because of this linear state space form, uh, it turns out that you can actually map a DSGE to a VAR with infinite order and parameters phi star. Intuitively, the reason for this is that the state space form of a DSGE implies today's observables depend on past states, so there is a real connection to past observables. In this sense, a DSG is a restricted VAR that places additional constraints on how today's observables are going to be related to past observables. A DSG VAR then uses this interpretation of a DSG as a restricted VAR with parameters phi star to form a prior for a VAR. So this prior will be parametrized by a hyperparameter lambda, which will range from zero to infinity. A value of zero means that you believe that your DSG has no predicted value relative to a VAR, and a value of infinity means that you think your DSG is exactly correct about the data. Uh, to understand what this means, you can look at this figure uh, on the slide. Uh, the black line is the likelihood of the data according to a VAR as a function of the VAR parameters phi. The DSGE predicts that the parameters of the VAR should be phi star, and so if you set lambda to infinity, that means you basically want a degenerate prior at exactly phi star, regardless of what the likelihood is. With finite lambdas, uh, the prior that we construct for the VAR from the DSGE will spread out around phi star, so that the posterior parameters from a Bayesian estimation of the VAR may differ from phi star. The smaller lambda is, the more dispersed this prior for phi centered around phi star will become. Uh, and in this sense, the value of lambda gets you an idea of the DSGE's misspecification. If the choice of lambda that best fits the data under some metric like marginal data density is very small, then your DSGE has very little predictive value relative to a VAR, uh, which is a standard benchmark for forecasting performance in macro. Conversely, a high value of lambda means that your DSGE has a lot of predictive information, 
So you should rely on the DHCE relatively more than the VAR to explain the data. So on the implementation side, it was quite straightforward to create DHCE VARs due to multiple dispatch and Julia's typing system. Basically, we just needed to implement uh, DSG VRs as a new type. And then to form an instance of this type, you create a DSG object and then pass it into this constructor. So right here, so here we're setting up the DSG. And uh, here we're initializing an empty DSG VAR. And then you just need to add information about the VAR side of the DSG VAR, such as which observables you want or the number of lags you want. Making estimation uh, work was super simple as well. Due to multiple dispatch, we just needed to write a likelihood function specifically for the DSG VAR. All the machinery we have written uh, for sequential Monte Carlo Metropolis Hastings for DSGs therefore worked right out of the box after doing that. Uh, as a result, estimating a DSG versus a DSG VAR looks virtually identical as the last two lines of uh, the script shows. Um, so as an example of using DSG VRs, on this slide, I've plotted the marginal data densities of the FRBNY DSGE and a canonical DSGE called Smith's batters when they're estimated as DSGE VARs. The fact that the MDD peaks at 1.2 for the FRBNY model and 0.3 for the Smith's batters model is an example of how Lambda helps you conduct model specification. These two plots say that the parameter estimates which best explain the data relative to VAR are those obtained from estimating a DSG VAR with lambda equals 1.2 for the FRBNY model and 0.3 for the smets vatters model. This also means that the FRBNY model is relatively more informative about the data than smets vatters when you're comparing against the VAR because the best lambda is higher for the FRBNY model. Finally, from the y-axis, you can also see that just the F MDD of the FRBNY model is much higher than the smets vatters model. Therefore, based on the marginal data density and lambda, the FRBMY model can be determined to be better at explaining than uh, the macro data that we're estimating that the models on than the Spets Fatters model. So, to conclude, um, DSG VARs are fast ways to estimate DSG models and have an assessment of model misspecification directly encoded into the estimation strategy. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me in the email on this slide. Uh, and thanks for listening to my presentation.